Hi, I'm Leonie from Spines and Splines. Today I'm going to make some woodcut prints using these ice cream sticks. One thing that I try to do a lot when I make art is to creatively reuse everyday waste items in my processes. We're heading towards summer where I live and the weather's getting warmer and when we were out on a walk the other day eating an ice cream, I wondered if the wood in the sticks would be suitable for making woodcut relief prints. When I got home, I cleaned and dried my sticks, then I painted them with some shellac-based drawing ink. This is partially so that you can see what I'm doing more easily in this video, but it also makes it easier for me to see what I've carved. The shellac base in the ink also helps seal the wood and protect it from moisture during the printing process. You can choose whatever colour of ink you want for this step. Because this is such a small surface, I wanted to keep my imagery pretty simple, and I had in mind the ripples that you see on a pond or a pool of water. So when the coloured ink was dry, I picked up one of my very small brushes and some opaque white ink and I use this to mark out the lines and areas that I wanted to carve away. There are a lot of different ways that you can transfer images onto a printing block, and drawing directly is a good method for experimental abstract type art and simpler images. If you want to carve something more complex, a tracing or a direct transfer method might be a better choice. Keep in mind at this stage as well that because this is a relief print, everything is reversed, so whatever you carve will print as a mirror image. This isn't something that I needed to consider for the prints in this video, but if you want to carve and print something like text, it becomes very important. When you've got all your imagery planned out, it's time to carve. I highly recommend carving on a non-slip mat. I've reused old pieces of rubber yoga mat for this before, and I also like this non-slip rubberized matting. Using a mat like this stops your block from slipping while you're carving, but you can also easily pick up the block and move it around so that you're always carving away from your hand. As I say in all of my relief printing tutorial videos, it's very easy to slip and cut yourself with a carving tool and it hurts. So cut away from your hand and use a non-slip mat to keep yourself and your wood block safe. This was especially important with the ice cream sticks because they're so tiny it would have been so easy to slip. I think that the ice cream sticks are made of Baltic birch and because they're normally something that you stick in your mouth, the surface was very smooth and carving it was very easy. I went slowly and carefully here, but I didn't notice a lot of splintering happening, like you sometimes get when you carve lower grade plywoods. If you're doing something like this, it helps to make sure that your tools are sharp. I stuck to line work because the surface area was so small and I kept the lines light and shallow. I grabbed out two of my V carving tools for this and I only ended up using my EC Lions small V shaped tool. I thought I might need my very fine Japanese V tool that you can see there on the mat, but it turns out that the slightly bigger tool was enough. For a more normal sized woodcut made with plywood, you'd also normally use a knife tool and a flat chisel to clear away any large areas, but that obviously wasn't necessary for such a small surface. If I'd wanted to clear away any larger areas of wood, I think I would have just stuck with the V tool. One of the really fun things about making experimental and abstract relief prints is that you can continue being experimental in the way that you print the imagery. With this artwork, I'm taking full advantage of the repetitive aspect of printmaking to layer the same imagery over itself and create a pattern. You can definitely just carve a full image and print it once on each piece of paper as an addition but you can also use the same procedures to try different things out and come up with unique images. You can work completely off the cuff just to see what will happen, 
but making a registration sheet before you print can be really helpful when you're working with the multiple in this way. To make this registration sheet, I marked out the corners of my printing paper with a grey lead pencil on a piece of newsprint, and then I marked the edges out more clearly with a marker. I also traced around my ice cream sticks and numbered them so that I knew where I needed to put each stick with each printing pass. If you're clear and methodical when you make your registration sheet, you can use it to print multiple copies of the same artwork, no matter how much experimenting you do or how many layers you need to print. With this type of registration sheet, I like to place it underneath a clear layer of plastic or glass so that I can print on top of it and then easily wipe it clean between each print. I also use a piece of scrap perspex to roll out my ink. The ink that I'm using is a tin of oil-based graphic chemicals 1796 Litho Black. I'm never ever showing you the inside of this tin because I've been using it for about six years now and in that time it's also had an international move and has seen better days, but there's still some good ink hiding in there. I really like this ink for woodcuts because it's quite stiff and I can roll it out thinly. A thinner, stiffer ink is a good option for woodcut printing as it's less likely to fill in the grain of the wood. Any good quality relief printing ink will work well and if you find that your ink is too runny, you can add a stiffening agent like magnesium carbonate powder. Alternatively, if your ink is too stiff, you can loosen it up with an appropriate thinner like linseed oil. Always start with less ink than you think you need, then add a little bit of ink to your rollout at a time to build it up if there's not enough of it. You can always add more ink to a block, but if you roll on too much ink all at once, you'll lose definition in your fine lines and you'll need to clean the ink off and start again. When you first ink up your block, you'll need to roll several times over it to add enough ink for printing. And your very first print might not be all that great, but repeated prints of the same block will only need a top up of ink and they should print more evenly. When you're ready to print, place your ice cream sticks or your plywood or your lino block on your registration sheet. Give your hands a clean if you've got ink on them, then carefully place your piece of paper down. 
I always place my paper from the same corner because this helps keep the registration more accurate. I have a speedball Teflon brayer that's really great for some things, but for certain prints I find that I can't transfer enough pressure with it. It's still useful though for pressing the paper down gently before I go in more heavily with the back of a spoon. Because the ice cream sticks that I'm printing from are so small, and because I'm printing three of them in one pass, I had to be really careful not to accidentally push or move them while I was printing with the baron and spoon. I made sure I did everything really slowly and carefully, but if you find that it's too difficult to print more than one stick at a time, you can print them individually in multiple passes and it will just take a bit longer. When you're printing by hand like this, your prints will work out better if you choose a thinner, smoother paper. I'm printing on some lightweight Japanese Hosho paper, and thin Japanese papers are particularly good for this type of printing, as they're generally made with quite long fibres, and they're a lot stronger than they look. While I print the rest of my layers, it seems like a good time to remind you that I have a Patreon and you can go and support it. I've set up a bunch of different reward levels with a variety of perks, so if you want to metaphorically buy me an ice cream once a month, that would be wonderful. Outside of Patreon, if you want to buy my original artwork, there's a bunch of it for sale on my website, including some of the prints that I'm making here. And if you want to buy reproduction prints of my paintings and drawings, I have those up for sale on Redbubble. As usual, you'll find links for everything in the description, which is the same general area as the like and subscribe buttons.
When you're done printing, you'll need to clean up your ink and your tools. I know it's not the most fun part of making art, but it's super important, so I always try and include it in these videos. I start my cleanup by scraping away excess ink with a scraper blade, then I roll out as much ink as possible from my roller and scrape that up as well. When I've cleared away as much ink as I can with the scraper, I use a rag and some citrus base cleaner to wipe down my roller, my tools, my wood box and my inking slab. If you're printing with oil based ink, you can also clean your slab with vegetable oil. And if you're using a water based ink or a water soluble oil ink, you can use a damp cloth. When your prints have dried overnight, you'll be able to hand colour and finish them any way that you want to. You'll generally have a couple of prints where something moved or smudged or just didn't print quite as well as you wanted it to, so it's good to use these reject prints to experiment with different colours and finishing options. I also made one of these watercoloured prints into a little snake book after colouring it, which ended up being really fun. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe and share it. If you've got any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave me a comment. I've listed all the materials that I used for my prints in the description, and you'll also find links there for my website, my Patreon, my Facebook, my Instagram, my Redbubble page, and some affiliate links to art stores where you can buy materials. Thanks for watching. Cheers.